and taking a second look at Travis's run. Backside 360 off the top of the course. Again, looking at Travis, he has that familiarity with it, but also this is how he's imagining the momentum of the event. I mean, what do you call Travis? It hasn't been said. I mean, he's, he's the goat. He's the brainchild of this thing. Um, but he's not just here to, like, play, like, welcomer. He's, he wants to win. Being able to make it through qualification to get past Kevin Backstrom, which I did not set myself up for success with that choice. But um, being able to get to go up to Canada, compete at bald face, and in part going up as well to compete on the new venue that, we're, that we have up in Alaska this season. Um, you know, this is like, this is the first level, but probably the hardest level to get to the final boss. And I want the final boss. Just the chills down my spine. I told ya. And for even more context, this is the dude who drove to Utah and went and hit park jumps to train for this and then drove back, specifically because he wanted to get dialed in and get to that spot. And just knowing what a powerhouse snowboarder Travis Rice is, and he's on his home turf right now, I don't know if there's a rider in the field more well equipped to handle snow conditions like this. Starting things off with a oh huge God. cab five, but going down. Well. That, that just points to the conditions right there, because by all accounts, it looked like he had set that down solid. But as we saw in the previous two runs, these falls does not mean your run is over. So backside 360 from Trav, a little popper through the trees right there. And his line selection is really, really good on this run right here. Yeah, you're not seeing oh, you're not seeing any tracks in this zone right here. So that's home field advantage for Travis. But you just saw right there the snow snake came up and got him. Trav's gonna finish out his run. Well, how hard is the course? You just saw. Took the tiebreaker and moved on to the quarterfinals, eliminating Chris Rasmussen. Let's see if he can do it against Kevin Backstrom. Are we going to get our first tiebreaker performance? Travis is going to have to leave it all out. So T Rice coming in switch. Cab five finds some good snow, powers through, needles through the trees right there and into some open terrain. Let's see where Travis goes. Back three, nose butter. And then coming off the side and clipping a tree. He's gonna put that tree back. Environment first. Like a true gentleman. Well, he deviated, took a unique line right there. Not looking like it worked out the way he had hoped. Big old backflip. It is by no means over for Travis Rice, though. He is going to keep it going. That's the beauty of how this thing is judged, is even a consequential fall, you can still take this round. Big old backside 540, getting that last 180 around at the last second. He's like a cat, just always lands on his feet. Well, he has options. He knows this course better than anybody else. Other riders might not have thought to go far riders left to get at that last day. influential backcountry snowboarder who has ever lived. He's so heavily associated with the backcountry, but as we all know, this dude's an X Games competitor. He's a US Open champion. He has a lot of competitive experience under his bibs. He actually beat Torstein Hortmo in the X Games Big Air. All right, so Travis starting things off. Huge cab five with the poke. Front side 360. Scrubs a little bit of speed there. And Travis Rice is looking locked in. Backflip, nose grab, scrubs a little more speed. You can tell he's a little more controlled in these runouts. He kind of knows what he needs to do, knows where he needs to slow down. And Travis is putting together a burner of a run right now. Switch back five. Wow. Sure looks like he landed that pretty clean. 
Don't poke the bear. You know, there's so much, but if, if I could try to pick one thing, you know, people could take away from watching this event, it's, it's not easy going outdoors and having real experiences with friends, but it's often so rewarding, even when it goes sideways, even when all your plans don't go accordingly. Like, just the act of putting in the time and effort to go do it is often incredibly rewarding, even when it doesn't work out. That's when you learn the most, too, so. And when you are a visionary like Travis, right, who believes like it's possible three, to enhance two, a mountain and spend one, thousands of hours up, building all summer for this to be a possibility, uh, it's just a testament to who he is. And as I said before, questionable, this man had food poisoning that ruined him for the last 24 hours. He was still sick yesterday. We saw him in the evening, ghostly white, didn't know if he'd be able to, to run today. He said, I'll take a couple little setup runs uh, to see how I feel. And from the start of that backflip, it looks like Travis is feeling good to go. Right into a front side three. He caught perfect transition on that landing. So Travis is gonna forego booster shot. And go backside seven, sniping the transition, going down a little bit. He was headed straight into that tree band. I thought he was tree bound. There he is, tree bound. Purposefully tree bound. Backside 360 tree tap. Unbelievable. He's brought his third run approach to this. And you know what's just so interesting about Travis and Torstein is the generational influence that they have had on snowboarding. You look at, you know, someone like Travis and someone like Torstein, it's a direct reflection of someone like Ben Ferguson and someone like Sage Kotzenberg. Trav, apparently you had food poisoning the last 24 hours. Yeah. We got to hear, how are you feeling, buddy? You look good. <laughs> feeling a lot better than I was last, yesterday. <sighs> and how good is that course for everybody watching? There's some nice, some nice deep landings. It's, it's a little better than first day course, that's for sure. And the confidence he's got to have right now coming off a first run score of 78 as Travis Rice drops in switch for his second run. Let's see What's what Mr. Rice can do. Oh. What in the world? That mid-air correction to slow down the way he was spinning on that cab five was unreal. Into the front side, 720. Into a deep tomahawk. Yeah, catches his nose in the landing. He, he didn't like commitment there. The old method from Trav. This is a man who was physically unable to hold down any food for over 24 hours until yesterday evening. And is somehow here performing at this level. This is going to be very interesting, how this is judged, I think. Yeah, and Travis just kind of opened up a new feature, that little cross court. That landing was all fresh right there. Boom. Boom. Pounds are going down. Uh, sitting in the reality of vision is Travis Rice, and he is with Stan up at the top. That's right, Salama, joined by Travis Rice, kind of the godfather of Jackson, godfather of this event. You must be feeling pretty swell after another successful day. Um, I feel great, man. I mean, look, you know, we've had about six inches of snow in the past month. Um, to have riders lay it down like they did today, I mean, respect goes to everyone that rolls through the portal here. Um, you know, is warrior, warrior shit out there today. <laughs> Yes. And in true Travis Rice form, uh, the drones are out, and I understand he's actually just going to hit uh, Coliseum into Master Blaster, which hasn't been hit yet. Uh, any any uh, reason, comments for that? Um, I don't know. I, I think the way that people's mindsets get focused, people get into their get into their runs, you know, they have exactly how they want to do it. And um, I think for me, I got to do it as a tribute to our build crew who freaking spent a lot of time putting in um, some pretty incredible features, and there's a virgin line still out there, so go clean it up. Incredible. Well, Travis, thank you for having us, and I look forward to, I don't know, maybe 900 more years of this, something like that. Close, close. <laughs>
There is no natural selection if not for the vision of one of the greatest snowboarders of all time in Travis Rice. He believes in evolution and consistency and growth, and he's taken that approach to this face here at Scary Cherry. Um, it feels awesome to be back on this venue, a venue that you know we put so much time, effort, love, passion into for the events in 2012 and 2013. You know, with the new format and the new approach that we're running this year, it's great to be back. It's such a dynamic venue. You know, Jeff Pensiero and the entire Baldface family, you know, they were so supportive of the first two events that we did here and have continued to be, you know, really true partners to the Natural Selection Tour. And, you know, working back to getting here this year, uh, it's been a long and awesome process. And, I mean, yeah, Baldface, it's, it's a dream place to go riding. Everybody loves it up here. A Yeti ambassador somehow still riding at this level at 39 years of age and still doing it with, with so much love for the sport, not just for himself, but for the entirety of snowboarding. I really think that that's the thing that people miss is that he's in it for the entirety of the sport. Oh, completely. Travis has always taken that into consideration from his movies to his events to his role in art and community. It's, it's incredible. And big backside 360 on the top section. Oh, and a really nice back one right there. So now he's making some switch turns down the middle portion of the course. It's so hard to watch someone ride switch faster than I'll ever ride in real life. <laughs> I feel you on that. Beautiful switch backside 540. It's so intriguing to watch Travis ride these courses that he was so obviously instrumental in creating and see how he interprets them and the creativity he brings. That look good, uh, see that the kind rice huh? vest. Wouldn't you like to have your hands on one of those? Oh, big score. The highest score of the day so far, an 88. Completely not planned that run. That creativity between features, really utilizing the entirety of the course from top to bottom, in addition to, like you were saying, the technical tricks, I think we're going to see that switchback five or an up-leveling of it. Beautiful method to start things off that first diving board feature. And as he navigates down to the second one, really poking out that front side 360 as he opens up a new section of the course right now. Coming in hard left. It's exciting watching Travis rip down through the course because he has a uh, tendency to open up new lines, like with that very big cliff drop. Looked like he was going for the tail grab on that. And big, then... Big backside 360. Front side five, massive as he careens to the guts of the course right now. And just, you know, throwing in a switch back one for good measure. We talk about the creativity. We also know that Travis is a showman and he knows the emotional impression the judges will get from him deciding to open up a whole new side of the course. Keep that in mind as these riders are navig navigating the course here in semifinal heat number one. So Travis Rice on course and getting pulled down by a little bit of a snow snake there up in that kind of more packed, little bit of tracked zone. But finding his way and going backside three deep. And then looks like he's gonna be heading over to that left side of the course that he pioneered during run number two of qualifiers and into that diving board feature. Front side grab and really soft touch in that landing right there. I love the way Travis, you know, had that little setup for that backside 360 up at the top. And as soon as he landed, boom, was in the air. Nice backside 540 signature. Sending that very deep there. And a half cab into some very nice fresh snow. Into a back three but just not quite finding the landing on that. 
So we've seen Travis utilize the terrain and opening up new lines as a way to not only find fresh snow, but increase the variety and amplify the score of his runs. And it looks like he's gonna be doing that again right now. Oh, shooting the pier. Travis with some gorgeous turns through there. And going off the tip of that. That was amazing. Big backside 180. And into a half cap. The manner in which Travis can always have that one piece of creative you haven't seen this yet from me in his pocket. It's one of the special things watching him in competition here. I agree. I think it's partially that he's always thinking so many steps ahead. Oh my <laughs> gosh. This guy. That was right there, exactly what you were talking about. This guy? Who's 39 here? This rad dad has a big corked backside 720. Travis Rice, the man whose concept has become reality in the shape of natural selection. He wasn't here last year. Let's find out what he makes of Alaska this year. To win an event up here with the rider field that is doing this event, um, I mean, it would be incredible uh, because that means that I would have ridden well. And I think that's everyone's goal coming up here um, is, you know, at the end of the day, it's like we all just we all just want to ride well. We all want to ride to our best ability. So it would mean a lot, especially with the field of riders that are up here. So Travis Rice dropping in for his second and final run in the quarterfinals. Huge wow. first turn. Beautiful hack right there from the man from Jackson. Detonating a couple of turns up top, crossing that spine. Winding his way up onto the front of this nose. And he's carrying speed, isn't he? Little drop. Oh! oh! The back five and reverts out of it. He had to switch that round pretty quickly. But that will be clean. The, he may take, the judges may take a little off in that combination, linking sense but the trick itself was immaculate. And hitting cross court to the second spine and backside 360 into the spine just to the left of that. And you saw on the landing there how much composure Travis has got. He wasn't even thinking about the landing. He was already looking at the next feature. Exactly, and that's so important when, as you said before, you have, you lose so much vertical so quickly that really maximizing every place that you are in is so important. Oh, Cap seven! Oh what wow. is he, what was he thinking? So he'd linked it. We'd seen that beautiful front one again. Effortless switch turns to a cab seven. Wow, I mean, that was him ratcheting things up. Oh my goodness, a glimpse of what Travis Rice's ambitions for natural selection are. It's gonna be interesting. I, so we've got a 90 point score from Travis on run one. I don't think, I mean, Travis. the backside five with the front one and the cab, this run is huge. I mean, he's surely feeling good. He's got that 92 to sit on, but of course, knowing Travis, he's not one to lay back on anything. Oh, that was a flat landing. He really had to judge his speed carefully there, not to overshoot that. So he's got one drop up at the top there. Little cheeky backside 180, setting up for that same hit that we saw Torstein on. Oh, and the go. cab five. Yeah, yeah, solid, solid strategy so from good, baby. Rice right there. And, and he's he, feeling good. It should have been toe heavy for him. He had to kind of lay light off his heels there to get into that super technical takeoff. What? Oh, oh man. Frontside wow. 540 off that diving board. So he's riding switch now and through the bottom of this face. Just opening up a whole new zone. Whoa! <laughs> Cap three! And just a little hot butter out. Okay, Travis Rice is on one right now. Where, where? I, I don't know what to say. This is just, 
this words sort of start running out at this point because we're in uncharted territory. No one's ever laid this kind of consistency down over a face this side with size this with this intensity of tricks. Everything that comes to mind it just feels inadequate. Madness, crazy, ridiculous. It's beyond that. It's this is genius. I mean, look at them. They're ripping the banners out. <laughs> The crowd is frothing right now. But I think, you know, looking at this diligently, that was a great run from Travis on its own. That would have been fantastic, but it's not his first run. And now finally, they meet head to head. Okay, so Travis heading off, rider's right, over this big bowling ball. Looking confident as ever. He knows exactly where he is, doesn't he? Yeah. Lovely turn up there. And he's got great snow on this side. Backside 180. <laughs> and then he's riding this better than most people can ride it forward. <laughs> so what's he setting up for? Cab five. <laughs> Cab five. Holds on to it. That's that T-Rise Golden Orca tail working for him. The lightest touchdown on a lofty backflip. He knows exactly where he is and he's measured his features perfectly, hasn't he? He knows the scale. Great method right there. I mean, that's a fantastic trilogy of tricks right now to start this off. Right, really chundry there. You can see there's been a lot of heat radiation off that rock face that had melted that snow. So he's dealing with that. Looks like he's anticipated it. And he's looking for the shaded side of this spine now to pop that back three into. Very, very tidy again. You get the feeling, I mean, we've talked about this. Travis Rice didn't get to come to Alaska in 2021. And it's almost like he's been plotting like some kind of Bond villain for the last year on how to get back here and what he's going to do when he gets here. No, completely. I mean, he is such an analytical rider. I mean, Tora is also, but you can't help but think that he has spent a lot of time playing this in his mind's eye leading up to this date. Okay. Woo! So Travis Rice, a very, very strong first run score. Oh, that has so many. And you can see now, even up at top, those that cloud-covered flat light is really, really coming in. I mean, we can barely see the the terrain nuances right now. Yeah, and you can see it in Travis's body language too. Little butter along the top of the spine there. Very little definition to play with here. And that, that roll just came up on you, didn't it? You saw Travis almost holding his hands up like, whoa, where am I going? I mean, this is a massive challenge, especially for Torstein. Oh, really having no <laughs> issue with that back three. Oh, oh, but there you go. That's where not being able to see the definition of the of the terrain. Yeah, can that came out of nowhere. You? Yeah. Like, we had no idea. I couldn't see that. There's no way that Travis can see that. It's like freaking ping pong ball. And then in true fashion, our champion literally did exactly what he does best. The one the only, the AK champion, Mr. Travis Rice. Yeah. 